Defense forces of Ukraine shot down a Russian Mi-8 helicopter with manpads. Personnel of the Ukrainian 54th Mechanized Brigade shot down a Russian Mil Mi-8 helicopter over the T-1302 highway near Berestov, Donetsk Oblast. Defense forces of Ukraine destroyed a Mi-8 helicopter of the Russian Aerospace Forces in Donetsk region. The video of the damage to the helicopter was published on social networks. Ukrainian anti-aircraft fighters shot down an enemy helicopter using a portable anti-aircraft missile system. The Russian Mi-8 helicopter flew along the battle line and at low altitudes to hide from the missiles. But the Russian aircraft was spotted at observation points and shot down. The successful hit of an anti-aircraft missile was captured on video by one of the drones of Ukrainian soldiers. The published video shows the occupier's helicopter burning and falling. Probably none of the crew survived. The helicopter crash site was later determined by coordinates. The military plane was shot down near the village of Spirn in Donetsk region. Mi-8 is a modern multi-purpose helicopter that exists in civilian and civil military transport versions. It is designed for the transportation of personnel, as well as cargo inside the cabin and on the external suspension. The helicopter was created taking into account the specifics of use in conditions of low temperatures, from minus 40 to 50 degrees Celsius and below, and limited visibility when flying, including during the polar night. Mi-8 in military versions is equipped with an EVP, steel armor plates, an automatic thermal trap ejector, an obstacle detector, and protected fuel tanks. It can have the same set of weapons as the Mi-24, as well as a complex of armored protection for the crew. Mi-8 can also adapt to use in the dark. The helicopter can be armed with two 7.62mm machine guns in the bow and stern mounts, two 12.7mm machine guns. The helicopter can carry up to two man gun containers with 23mm GSH-23 liters guns, two units of unguided S-8 anti-aircraft missiles, Sturm V-ATGM or Ataka ATGM, up to eight pieces, or 4,250 kg bombs. Russia will run out of arms before Ukraine does because it has isolated itself so much, UK Defense Secretary says. The UK's defense minister said that Russia will run out of weapons before Ukraine does, because Russia is isolated and cut off from the global supply chain. Ben Wallace was asked by Sky News in an interview shared on Thursday if there are risks that Western allies are going to run out of weapons to support Ukraine first, compared to Russia. Wallace said in response that there was not. He said this was the case because Ukraine's Western allies are not at risk of running out unlike Russia, which has already isolated itself. Russia's ability to make and repair weapons and ammunition is tied up in a global supply chain that it has little current access to, he said. They need a supply chain, and large parts of their supply chain were not in Russia, they came from all over the world including in Europe and including, indeed, even in Ukraine, he said. Ukraine's allies have imposed several waves of sanctions on Russia, cutting it off from key supplies, since the war began. But there have been reports that the West is reaching the limits of its capacity to supply Ukraine with ammunition as the Wall Street Journal and CNBC reported. An assessment in September by the Center for Strategic and International Studies listed the stockpile status of five key weapons, including the famed Mars, as limited. Addressing these kinds of concerns, Wallace said, we have the ability to refurbish and indeed manufacture a new supply chain, which is what we're doing right now. But Cheese noted that topping up U.S. reserves can be a slow process, thanks to factors like long production lead times. And French President Emmanuel Macron said on Wednesday that France cannot deliver as much as the Ukrainians ask for as it needs to keep some weapons itself. Wallace said that the IFU, a new international fund to provide equipment and support to Ukraine announced in August, is an illustration of how the West can keep supplying Ukraine with weapons. The manufacturing orders place through that will make sure we can go on in 2023 and 2024, and keep going on, he said. Russia itself has also ended up being a big supplier of weapons to Ukraine on top of the West's contributions, according to the Wall Street Journal. As Ukrainian forces pushed back and retook large swathes of territory in the north and east, fleeing Russian soldiers have abandoned large stockpiles of weapons and ammo. Ukraine now turned these the Russians, the outlet reported. Wallace said that Russia's isolation from most of the world was starkly illustrated in a UN vote on Wednesday, when 143 countries backed a motion to condemn its invasion of Ukraine. The only four countries to vote against the motion other than Russia itself, North Korea, Belarus, Syria, and Nicaragua, are all countries with highly repressive regimes. Russia has turned to to such pariah states for weapons supplies, with U.S. intelligence claiming that North Korea had supplied it weapons. North Korea has denied the move, which would be in violation of UN sanctions. Russia has also taken delivery of Iran-made drones, which Ukrainian officials reported were in use throughout the fall including during President Vladimir Putin's most recent bombardment of Ukraine. 
abandoned Russian base holds secrets of retreat in Ukraine. The Russian soldiers had fled weeks before. But they left their traces everywhere. Concrete steps led into the basement of their hastily abandoned headquarters in this small riverside town in eastern Ukraine. A bunker smelling of damp lay behind a steel door marked Command Group. Papers, some charred, were stuffed into a furnace. Others were scattered across the floor. In a floral notebook, an unnamed staff officer left a sketch of a cartoon soldier and mused about going home. The book's 91 handwritten pages contained other information, too, coordinates of Russian intelligence units, records of calls from commanders, details of battles, men killed and equipment destroyed. And accounts of a breakdown in morale and discipline. In all, the bunker yielded thousands of pages of documents. Reuters reviewed more than a thousand of them. They detailed the inner workings of the Russian military and shed new light on events leading up to one of President Vladimir Putin's most stinging battlefield defeats, Russia's chaotic retreat from Ukraine's northeast in September. In the weeks before that defeat, Russian forces were struggling with surveillance and electronic warfare. They were using off-the-shelf drones flown by barely trained soldiers. Their equipment for jamming Ukrainian communications was often out of action. By the end of August, the documents show, the force was depleted, hit by death, desertions and combat stress. Two units, accounting for about a sixth of the total force, were operating at 20% of their full strength. The documents also reveal the increasing effectiveness of Ukraine's forces and offer clues to how the eight-month-old war might unfold, with Russia now under intense pressure on the southern front around the Black Sea coast. In the weeks before their retreat, Russian forces around Balaklia, a town 90 kilometers south of Kharkiv, came under heavy bombardment from HIMARS rocket launchers, recently supplied by the United States. The precision missiles repeatedly hit command posts. A Russian officer who served in the Balaklia force for three months, described to Reuters a sense of menace hanging over the occupiers. One of his friends bled to death in early September after a Ukrainian strike on a command post in a nearby village. It's a game of roulette, said the officer, who asked to be identified by his military call sign Plackett Jr. 888. You either get lucky, or you are unlucky. The strikes can land anywhere. The Kremlin press service referred questions for this article to the defense ministry, which didn't comment. Russia has said previously its military has everything it needs to fight the war. The documents in the bunker named Colonel Ivan Popov as the commander of the Russian military force operating from Balaklia. Popov and many of his senior officers belong to the 11th Army Corps, part of the Russian Navy's Baltic fleet. In 2017, the official newspaper of Russia's armed forces published a profile of Popov. It said he served in Russia's war against separatists in Chechnya and the 2008 invasion of ex-Soviet Georgia. He jogged with his men and remembered his officers' birthdays, it said, adding that Popov is motivated to achieve success. Popov did not respond to a message seeking comment. His wife told Reuters he commanded a force in East Ukraine. The Balaklia force included a commandant responsible for keeping the local civilian population in check.